we're going to talk about solving first order linear differential equations with the integration factor. As a reminder, a linear differential equation is in the form of a1x dy dx plus a0xy equals g of x. That is, there's no y squareds or square roots of y or anything like that. And we're talking about a first order differential equation. I'm going to outline the steps we're going to use to solve these. I find it easier to lay out the steps and explain what we're going to do and why we'd want to do it, and then I go back and explain why it works. The first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to call it step zero since we don't always have to do it, is to put the differential equation in standard form. Standard form is when the numerical coefficient in front of the y prime is equal to one. So if there's anything in front of the y prime, you'll divide it out and put it in this form. We're going to call anything that is multiplying our y as px, and then f of x will be the right-hand side of the equation. The next thing we're going to do is calculate the integration factor mu x. You don't know how to do this yet, and you don't know why we're going to do this, but I'm going to say that step one is calculate the integration factor. The next thing we're going to do is multiply both sides of the differential equation by mu of x. Then we're going to rewrite the left-hand side as d dx of mu of x times y. Why we can do that, I'm going to explain later. Why we want to do that, I'll explain now. The reason why I want to be able to rewrite the left-hand side as a single derivative of mu times y is if I want to simply integrate both sides of the equation and solve for y, the left-hand side works out to be pretty nice. Now the right-hand side could be messy, but if I integrate with respect to dx, the derivative of d dx, then I'm just left with mu of x times y equals whatever this is. I can just solve for y, and then I'll get my solution. The question is, how can I make mu of x such that I can rewrite the left-hand side as this simple derivative? So if I go through my general equation, I have the step zero done with the differential equation in standard form. I'm going to find my mu of x, which, as I said, I'm not telling you how to find yet. But if I just follow my step two, which is multiply both sides of the equation by mu of x, this is what I get. However, what I said I want is I want this left-hand side to be equal to the single derivative. So let's see if we can find a mu of x to make this true. So let's set this up as an equation. On the left-hand side, let's go ahead and use the distributive property. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to go ahead and use the product rule. Because remember, y is really also a function of x. So the derivative of the right-hand side would simply be this. Well, looking at this, I can see that I can go ahead and subtract off the mu dy dx from both sides of the equation. One I've written in prime notation, the other in Leibniz notation, but they're certainly the same thing. Once we subtract that out, we can also see that now we can divide out our y. Now this is something we know how to solve. This is a separable equation. I go ahead and separate my variables, and then I integrate both sides. And when I do this, I get the natural log of mu is equal to the integral of px dx. Now again, we don't know what px is. We're doing this in the general form. If I want to solve for mu, then I exponentiate both sides, and I find this rather magical formula. If mu of x is set equal to e to the integral of px dx, then what I've hoped to set equal to each other is going to be true. That is, I can rewrite that top line, mu of x times y prime plus pxy, as a single derivative of d dx of mu of x times y. I've gone ahead and rewritten my steps. We're going to put our equation in standard form. We're going to find mu of x. Now we know that has to be equal to e to the integral of px dx. We'll multiply both sides of the differential equation by mu of x, rewriting the left-hand side as d dx mu x y, and then we'll integrate both sides and solve for y. Let's look at an example. I have the differential equation y prime minus 3y equals 6. This is already in standard form. It is linear and it's first order. I notice that px is equal to negative 3. 
mu of x is equal to e to the integral of px dx, which in this case works out to be e to the negative 3x. We're not going to use a constant here, mainly because u of x would work no matter what this plus c is. When we were doing our calculation of mu of x, we did not include the plus c. But once you do the integration, the plus c is there. That means mu of x with any plus c makes this work. Well, if we can pick anything for c, let's make it be 0, and let's not worry about it. So I'm now going to multiply both sides of this equation by mu of x. This is how I usually write it. I leave it first in terms of mu of x, so I don't forget to, first of all, change the left-hand side to that single derivative, and second, so I don't forget to multiply the right-hand side also by that same mu of x. Now I go ahead and plug in my mu of x, and now I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x. The left-hand side is simply mu of x times y, and it will always work out to be this way. And when I integrate the right-hand side, I get negative 2 e to the negative 3x plus a constant. In this case, I need my constant. Now I'm going to solve for y, so I'm going to divide both sides by e to the negative 3x, and I get my answer. y is equal to negative 2 plus c e to the 3x. Let's go ahead and try another example. y prime plus 2xy equals e to the x minus x squared. And we also have an initial condition. Let's first find our mu of x, and we find the integration factors e to the x squared. We're going to multiply both sides of this equation by mu of x. Now I go ahead and plug in the actual mu of x I calculated. I do some simplification to the right hand side. Now I integrate both sides with respect to x. Now I'm going to solve for y, and we have our general solution. I need to go ahead and use my initial condition, and I find that c is equal to negative 2. And there I have my final solution to the initial value problem, y prime plus 2xy equals e to the x minus x squared.